Here's what nobody in Silicon Valley wants you to know. We're witnessing one of the most expensive magic tricks in tech history. Companies are burning through billions of dollars claiming that chatbots are the next step towards artificial general intelligence. But here's the reality check. We're not building mines. We're building expensive autocomplete. So after watching this exact pattern destroy fortunes in crypto, NFTs, and the dot-com bubble burst, and many other different hype cycles, I can tell you the warning signs are flashing red everywhere. Are we on the brink of the biggest tech reality check since the internet bubble burst? Is your company about to waste millions of dollars chasing AI fantasies? And most importantly, how do you actually use this technology without getting burned? Because let's be honest, LLMs are powerful technology and you definitely need to be putting these to use. But I want to cut through the hype because I'm an AI realist and I want to break this down for you today on how you can really use AI for real in your life and use it into your applications. Let's dive into this today. <laughs> All right, look, we've been through enough tech bubbles to recognize the pattern. Right now, we're in the, what the Gardner hype cycle calls the peak of an inflated expectation. So let's break, let's take a look at this article here, because uh, if you haven't ever seen this before, it's definitely time that you see this. Uh, so let me get my camera switched over here and we can uh, we can show you some of these here. So um, the you see here that we're at the peak of inflation, right? So you see a new technology trigger. So this was like ChatGPT 3.0 coming out, right? Everybody's talking about it, everybody's seen it. Now we are right here at the peak of inflated expectation. In fact, I think we've actually tipped over and I think we're on our way back down of it right now, heading toward the trough of disillusionment. So this is where you're starting to see realists and you'll see a lot of reports coming out about like how much money OpenAI is gonna be burning over the next you know five years, et cetera. Then we'll come up the slope of enlightenment because this is where we actually start to see real use of a new technology, right? And so from this, from this uh, slope of enlightenment, we'll see where it really starts to get put into place here, right? And so this is where we'll start to use it. And then you see the plateau uh, of productivity. This is where we actually start using these tools really in our lives. And so this is the hype cycle that we're in today, right? Today, I'm gonna break down exactly where we are in the hype cycle, how smart developers can use LLMs effectively while avoiding the hype-driven disasters. Plus, I want to hear your thoughts on this too, because one of the favorite things you my favorite things you can do is comment because I love hearing the comments down below. It's one of my favorite things, so make sure you're commenting down below. Now, uh, as we break through some of these, I want to pull up some of these articles here for you. So how long can the hype cycle outrun reality? We're witnessing the most expensive act in tech history, pouring trillions of uh, into a dead-end Gen AI LLM. Now, I'm not going to go as far as this guy and say it's dead-end. But he's saying 500 billions later, no AGI, no cognition, no mind, no clue. Now, they are powerful. And so I do think this is pretty o a little overstated. Like, clearly, you know, the AI that we're using today is actually, you know, useful. We're using it for a lot of different things. And we're using it in a lot of our products. However, it is not AGI and it's not getting anywhere. So when I hear people like Elon Musk say, hey, it's going to be PhD level, uh, you know, intelligence, it's also PhD level intelligence, and yet at the same time, not even as smart as a two-year-old, right? So if 95% of Gen AI pilots fail, why is it still being sold as the future? If hallucination facts break under pressure, is it ever reliable? Now, this is also one of the big questions, and I'm going to get dive into some of this today. Um, there's a lot of agitation on X with people who have AI startups living in denial that they're a part of the AI bubble and that 95% of them are about to go bust. And this is from the report of MIT saying that 95% of all generative AI pilots are on comp companies are failing. Now, I'm going to go through this one here because this is the same guy as the last one. He said the real reason that AI bubbles will burst is because transhumanism and tech accelerationism form a unified belief system that is anti-human. Deep down, we sense this, right? Now, I'm just going into this because I'm not, I don't want to build something that's anti-human. Due to the arrogance and impatience of the accelerationists, the adverse effects of their plan, tech utopian feature, have piled up rapidly and reveal horrors, right? So he goes through and he talks about these, but right, and, and he's saying, once at birth, we must hold them accountable, map, tie together. And again, I think this is all a little dr more dramatic than we probably need to be in. I don't think the bubble is going to be this big of a burst. The AI bubble is a scam. You're the exit strategy. So the future isn't being built, it's being flogged to suckers by lads uh, who lay, who bought in early and are now practicing the smug little exits, right? So this is, and so there, you can tell that there's definitely some hot hostility here, right? Let me put it plainly, AI is a bubble. Now, I do think that we're in a bubble. However, that doesn't mean that the technology is gonna go away. It doesn't mean every one of these companies are gonna crumble, um, but we are gonna see a bunch of different things happen. We're seeing lawsuits mount up against these companies. We're seeing uh, a, a lot of different things happening um, as we see different companies try to pile into this. 
So um, I wanted to go down through here. It says, and yet the hollow marble is now being slid that every industry likes it or what? Customer service, healthcare, education, uh, therapy, journalism, not because it works, but because it's cheap and scalable and sounds impressive and the investor calls. And I will agree with that last part. Investors salivate over anything AI. And I get into this all the time. We're in the boardroom, you hear AI and suddenly every executive head perks up and looks around the room, right? It's not cheap. That's part of the myth. It's really not. AI systems are expensive. I was looking over a company's um, expense report recently. And as I was looking over it, I found that one of their most expensive bills right now is all of their AI that they're spending on. Um, the black box AI cannot refactor itself. The COBOL moments of LLM is looting. Now, the COBOL moment means that what they're referring to here is COBOL never went away. It was supposed to be that thing that was going to originally was the thing that was going to take over the world. Then it became the thing that would never die. And that's what we're going to run into here. The LLMs are here to stay, right? And that's what I want to dig into today is the LLMs are here to stay. So how do we put them to good use uh, so that we can be using them, right? Now, um, walk into any startup pitch meeting today and you'll hear wall building chat GPT for X, right? And that's what they say all the time. So it's the new Uber for Y, right? For, you know, back in 2015, everything was, we're the Uber for this, right? Now it's, we're the chat GPT for fill in the blank, you know, whether it's healthcare or whatever. These companies take existing software, bolt on a conversational interface powered by OpenAI's API, and suddenly they're AI powered innovation. Now, I've reviewed a lot of these as, and they're revolutionary platforms that are just wrappers around different API services. The companies that survive the shakeout will be the ones who go deep into the integration, build their own AI systems, or build integrations into uh, open source ones that they can own that technology for a long time. So here's the fundamental difference that nobody's talking about. Writing code and building software are completely different skill sets. AI models excel at generating individual functions, solving specific algorithms, and even creating basic CRUD operations. But building software requires understanding business logic, system architecture, user experience, and how all those pieces come together. And by the way, if your system, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems to make your company work like a well-oiled machine. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. But this is why we see experienced developers who learn to use AI tools effectively are the ones who are dominating in the space. And that's what we're doing here at Startup Pack. So while those who think AI will replace them get left behind, those who learn how to use AI become even more powerful deliver, uh, developers. So remember when everyone said that full automation was gonna be the goal? Well, quietly everyone has everyone successful has moved back to human in the loop, right? They've worked to try to increase the opportunities for humans to get in the loop with AI. So my experience building teams tells me that the future belongs to humans who can effectively collaborate with AI tools, not try to compete against them. So here's the thing where things get interesting, right? While everyone's using generic chat GPT, the real competitive advantage just comes from domain specific AI models. This means going out there and using AI models, particularly open source models that you can pull down, work into your software and build into your systems. This approach requires real engineering work, not just API integrations, which is why most companies aren't going to do it. So everyone's focused on the AI models, but nobody's talking about the insane infrastructure costs required to run them at scale. Uh, recently, I was working with a client and they tried to get a quote for a system that had eight, um, H, uh, eight H100s in it from, uh, from Dell, and it was over $300,000. Whereas instead, I have a DIY that shows you how you can build your own personal uh, DI AI server for under $500. Now, clearly, that's not as powerful as that $300,000 $300, server. But when you take them and break them down and distribute these and distribute the workload across and break down the process, you actually build real software and can do it at a fraction of the cost. So the winners in the space are going to be those who solve efficiency problems, not just throwing more GPUs at it. Companies are rushing AI features to market without even considering the mass privacy implications of sending customer data out into third-party APIs. So the other reason why it's better to build them on your own server because you can contain that information. I think we're going to see massive amounts of lawsuits coming through from everybody who's been pumping, pumping uh, customer data out into these systems. So when I hear people say, well, yeah, we're just doing ChatGPT, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, you're actually sending like HIPAA data into there? Oh, well, yeah, well, Whoa, like that's not a good idea, right? Companies that prioritize privacy and security from day one will survive the regulatory tsunami that is coming. Now, VCs pour $500 billion into AI startups over the last two years, but now they're asking the uncomfortable questions. 
Where's the sustainable business model? The funding frenzy is already starting to cool down as investors realize that most AI startups are just expensive service businesses disguised as technology companies. As they do that, uh, they're going to see more uh, a pullback from this over the coming weeks, over the coming uh, months. So all the fear mongering about AI agents replacing entire job categories is missing the point completely. Uh, interest rates have killed more jobs right now than AI uh, ever will. So to kind of wrap things up here, start small with a very clearly defined use case that has measurable success criteria. Don't try to boil the ocean and become everything. Always maintain human oversight. Keep the human in the loop as you build out the LLM stuff, uh, you build out your LLM technologies. Invest in understanding your data and privacy requirements before sending anything into an external. Just don't even use external. Build it internal. Build internal expertise rather than outsourcing your AI strategies. Focus on augmentation over automation. Use AI to make your teams more efficient and your tools better, not replace human judgment. So remember the goal isn't to use the latest technology. It's to solve real business problems and deliver measurable value. And again, if your company needs help with these things, reach out to us because here at Startup Hack, our specialty is building software for companies. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. And here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems. It positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuphack.com Spencer.